Welcome back to BBS Game Engine Devlog. It's been a long time since previous devlog. However, keep your expectations low, because I didn't work much on it, but there is still some progress has been done. The main reason why I want to showcase new stuff is, there are a lot of different features were added since then, and if I'll keep adding, then the next devlog will be even more clustered. So I'm making this video for the sake of organization. We have a lot to cover, so let's go. Before I'll show you juicy features, I'll bore you to death with stuff no one cares but me. A lot of work went into refactoring. I spent a lot of hours into making sections of the code, like rendering, much comfortable. Other parts of code were rewritten because, even though they worked, I just didn't really like their general implementation, like configuration system. Shout out to Cryfi for ideas that he also used to refactor Maclib's configuration system. Main dashboard GUI was slightly changed. Instead of icons being on the left, they are now on the bottom. I like it more, but your feedback would be appreciated. Besides, scripting REPL panel, Rediva print loop, was moved to a separate tab, and I also copied over particle editor from BBS mod. Now we can get to more interesting features. There were a couple of neat features added to camera editor, beside fixes. One of those is a quality of life feature, which allows to vertically resize the camera clip timeline. Another quality of life feature is being able to copy and paste position and angles of camera clips. And last, but not least, is this button, which allows to record full duration of this camera timeline to a video. There is also a convenient button to open the folder to where that video footage was exported. Besides Particle Effect Editor, I also sneaked in Scenes and Player Recording Editor from BBS Mod. Not only that these features were ported to BBS Engine, but they were also improved. Player Recording Editor now allows not only actions editing, but also frame editing, which means, player recordings can be edited much easier, as there is no need for commands anymore to do some tasks like removing or adding new frames. Meanwhile, scenes menu didn't change that much, beside Minecraft specific features going away, but there is a new layout that allows adding multiple groups of actors, making it possible to easily disable specific actors when they aren't needed. Finally, in addition to scenes and player recording editor, instead of edit camera button, scenes can be synchronized with the camera editor by adding a special camera clip, pretty cool. Get ready for the main focus of this devlog, block models, and world editing. World storage and configuration was rewritten to some extent. There is this new menu which allows to manage worlds currently present in this session. When creating a new world, there are a lot of options regarding how the world is stored. Some important options control whether chunks are stored in cubic or column format, compressed or not, generator and its options, chunk size, and how far the generation goes. Cubic format allows vertical generation, while column is optimized for horizontal storage, as cubic chunks are stored individually, while column chunks in columns, meaning column of chunks saved in one file, making compression more effective. At the moment though, generators are pretty limited though, but at least they allow some options. In the world manager GUI, it's also possible to edit existing world metadata, convert between different storage formats, load and remove worlds. Beside world storage options, I also refactored heavily the way blocks are stored and created. Before that, blocks were just numerical values. Now though, blocks have their own block IDs, variant IDs, and global numeric IDs. Beside that, block tile set editor was updated to accommodate those changes. Here are displayed all of the blocks available for use. Beside that, Block model set editors panels have new features like renaming block ID, and collision box fields. There are also new block types like slabs and stairs, and guess what? Slab block type allows placing vertical slabs, crazy right? And now there is a way to edit combined block types, which basically allow pasting model code from block bench. Here is an example. And finally, world editor was drastically improved. 
first. Instead of picking blocks with a numerical field, it's possible to pick a block variant from a block picker. This menu displays all available block variants. There is also an option that allows placing blocks based on which face cursor points. Three types of new tools were added, which are spray, flood fill, and extrude. Spray brush allows to place specific blocks on top of the surface making it pretty useful to place foliage. Flood fill tool allows to fill holes downwards or upwards. And finally extrude tool allows to extrude selected area multiple times. Meanwhile, certain tools were also improved. Selection tool was reworked, and now it's possible to drag its faces to either resize, or move along selected axis. Paste brush received a couple of nice features. First of them, the brush now has a preview of how the blocks will be placed, and the second is a simple implementation of templates. With this feature, it's possible to copy a part of the world, save it as a template, and load it again anytime. This is very useful. And finally, brush responsiveness was improved. Drawing with one of the brushes is more continuous, as opposed to previous version where blocks have been skipped even with lower delays, due to lack of interpolation. That's pretty much it about World Editor. I'm very happy with how this update has turned out. Last but not least, Mappet's expressions were removed, and instead all of the features that use them, now use scripts instead. That means, condition script block was added to be able to use scripts in conditions. Switch node, the one that allows to change dialog flow depending on the output value of expression, allows to use scripts directly. Finally, script condition and trigger blocks now have an line option, which allows scripting directly in the trigger, instead of in a separate script. That's pretty much it. I hope this devlog was interesting. I'm still not sure whether I'm ready to release this engine for people to test yet. However, if you want to discuss it, feel free to join Discord server dedicated to BBS Engine. Thank you very much for watching.